All right, everyone, day three of the Patreon purge. It's time to uh, uh, basically to talk about the fallout, the collateral damage, as you will, uh, to other content creators. Uh, Patreon did not think this through very well. In the last uh, 72 or so hours, I've lost about $600 a month in income on, on Patreon. Now, Subscribestar, which I'm now on, has more than made up for that, so it's not really taking a hit, but I'm looking at the situation, I'm thinking, that's a lot of money. Um, to anyone who's not already fairly wealthy, so, uh, fucking, uh, what would that come out to in a year? $7,200, I believe, if I'm calculating correctly. I think I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, that's uh, quite a chunk of change. That's like decent used car. And <laughs> that's like down, down payment on a condominium or something like that. So uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of rent that you could pay. It's a lot of taxes that you could pay. Um, and by the way, I'm not faulting any of the people that are withdrawing from Patreon, and a lot of them are moving to, you know, Subscribestar or whatever. I've had people say I should set up a P.O. box and they'll mail me a check or <laughs> like 10 bucks or something. Uh, and I'm like, uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I prefer not to accept mail from from random people. It's a little weird to me because I'm like, hey, someone might mail me white powder or something because I'm a politically active person. You know, the post office won't deplatform you. I know that. And P.O. boxes aren't that expensive. Maybe I'll set that up. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens as far as the moral outrage mobs continue. Um, but there's been a lot of collateral damage, and it's not just me, and I'm not even the most affected. The most affected, of course, is Sargon, because he lost, what, 10, 11,000 a month. He has to use not just Subscribestar now, but, you know, think about, hey, am I going to still be on the internet? Who even fucking knows at this point? Uh, obviously a target for some people. Uh, it's, it's hit Cullen. It's hit Tim Pool. Uh, it's certain, it hits everybody. What happens is that the entire political creator community takes a hit because a lot of those people that were funding Sargon and now are leaving the platform funded other people too. So Patreon, Patreon really owes an apology to other creators that have done nothing wrong, broken no TOS, Sargon didn't either, but you know, we can get into that separately. Uh, he gets kicked off and, and you know, th probably thousands of people have abandoned the platform. By the way, it's a compounding effect. How many tens of thousands of total dollars moving around are now no longer on your platform? And what cut did Patreon take? How much money have you lost as a company? Companies should be reluctant to stop doing business with any entity that's causing a profit. That's the way uh, business is supposed to work. You're not supposed to be politically active at all. You're not supposed to really get, you're not supposed to be a moral actor. You're supposed to grub after money if you're a good company. And if you're not willing to do it, somebody else will. Eventually, somebody innovates a, a, a non-deplatformable uh, tech that will uh, prevent you from being able to do anything about it. You can destroy your own company. I hope Patreon doesn't do that because it's a really easy to use service. Someone I've used for a while. It does bring a, a fairly decent chunk of income. I'd, I'd rather not have to hop platform to platform all the time. I have to get on all the alt tech, alternate fundraising. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm setting up a fucking P.O. box. Fucking taking snail mail in order to make ends meet is, is something that's now in people's head. It's weird. I would say the uh, details uh, of the banning are even funnier, though, because they uh, reached out to Tim Pool, among others, and explained, well, uh, this is why Sargon is off. He used a homophobic comment in this video. <laughs> if you're looking, if you're referring to the video, it's not on Patreon. It's not even on his channel. It was on someone else's stream, and it was used within a comedic, satirical, sarcastic context. That is so. So what Patreon is signaling, unfortunately, is that, and this is this has affected me uh, differently. I'll I'll get into that as well. What they're saying is you can't even like refute bigots or or, refu or people who you consider to be bigots or or outside of TOS or something. You can't refute people who you consider to be like out there because if you use the wrong language, you get fucked as well. And so all it requires is one or more people who are outraged at the fact that you used it even in a comedic context to get you deplatformed off a site. And in today's day and age, something that you said long ago on one site can be used by every other site to justify depersoning you if they don't like you to begin with which is why you have a differential on the kinds of people that this actually applies to. This is very similar, though. This, this hits close to home. In the wake of me debating Spencer, which Sargon was also involved in, I can remember a bunch of leftists jumped down my throat as though I was hateful because I didn't sit there red in the face and, and basically tell him to fuck himself. Like, the fact that I was able to have a sane debate and differentiate what I believe in from what Spencer believes in, and he's by far not the most out there identitarian either. I don't see him calling for violent revolution and crazy shit uh, on a regular basis. I debate him. 
I don't agree with him. I'm debating him on political topics. I fail to be angry enough, and the far left says, well, you were too conciliatory. You're a secret Nazi enabler, because you get on there and you have this big-ass stream, and he's you know potentially making money from it and stuff. When the Data Society report came out, that, that famous defamatory hit piece claiming that Bunty King is the next you know Heinrich Himmler or whatever, when that came out, uh, they, they mentioned that debate in the first paragraph, don't even mention my username. I wonder why that could possibly be. Could it be that a person who's 666 and their username doesn't fit in with the normal stereotypical mold that they're seeking to project on the creator community as a bunch of people who, as, as a bunch of people who are really, really, really politically far out there, like on the way, way far right? And then I'm looking at the list of names, I'm seeing like this person's a libertarian, that person's a liberal, this person isn't even really political. You know, they just happen to, to do the internet blood sports thing. They don't even really give a fuck about it. They're there for the dumpster fire. You know, it was hilarious, and this has happened over and over again. Yeah, lesson learned. I learned my lesson. Don't bother to debate the identitarians, because you're not going to win any favors from the left. It's not like they're going to come and give you any credit. No, they'll still be calling you a far-right Nazi. They'll still be saying that you should be silenced. So why the fuck would I want to do their dirty work for them? You fucking debate these people. I'm not going to bother doing it. Because then if I do that, you're going to say that I'm, I'm, I'm platforming hate or something stupid like that. Because you're clueless. So this has happened before. Um, not to the financial sense, uh, I mean, uh, financial level in, in the sense of uh, my content. The thing is, though, uh, Patreon should know better. It affects other people. They should have thought about how this would affect other people on the platform and how it would damage their brand with not just one creator and their fans. That's all well and good. Sargon had a lot of people on their Patreon. Brand. What would they make? Five, six hundred dollars a month off of just Sargon. Now they've lost thousands of dollars a month more because those people were also donating to other individuals. They were interconnected. The fact that Sargon was making, you know, the, the lion's share of that money doesn't mean there aren't dozens or hundreds of other people that had people that were, de that were donating to them that now are no longer on the platform. Some of them moved to Subscribestar, some of them are begging me to make a P.O. box, and some of them probably just rescinded their pledge. They're like, fuck it. And I understand the hesitance. By the way, as an aside, people have brought this up. Because of what happened to Maker Support, which appears to have been a scam, let's face it, and Hatreon that was deplatformed because it got flooded by, you know, people, the Daily Stormer crowd maybe, uh, I understand people's hesitance to trust their platform. I'm waiting to see what happens, and Gab with Torba are planning a fundraising platform. Now, Gab has shown remarkable resilience to all forms of deplatforming. They've managed to gain an enormous amount of user base uh, every month uh, from all around the world. I have faith that they will outlast uh, basically any attempt to fully deplatform them. I think they will eventually become a very powerful mainstream website. Unfortunately, over time, over a few decades, they might get corrupted too by their own income and power. But for right now, uh, I'm hopeful about that, but I've got to use Subscribestar, uh, essentially. If you don't support Patreon because of this, I'm not asking you to get, get off of Patreon. I'm not saying, well, you know, screw this site. I'm still using it. But I can understand why people would demand a different venue for the same behavior. Um, yeah, fully understandable. I have to say, I'm thinking about it myself, and I'm like, well, if Torba's thing works out and shows its uh, stability, might not need Patreon anymore. If it has recurrent pledges, um, that's a big thing. I hope that Torba keeps that in mind. If you just have a tipping service or, or a subscription service where you have to offer something extra on the side, a little bit different, generally speaking, than just being able to solicit small donations or something, uh, which you can do. You can set up tiers and stuff on Subscribestar. It's actually innovative. That's why I think it should be able to you know, prevail as opposed to maker support or, again, Hatreon. Hatreon, which still, um, that wasn't a scam. They, they did do the final payout for me. Uh, it's just that their site went kaput. It has no one to process payments. <laughs> it has no way to actually transfer money. Uh, we've seen that banking has been weaponized. I wonder how many people are actually comfortable with that. That's about all. Peace out.